What's up everyone, it's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel and you guys saw the title. Much overdue video going over the Vivo 2.0 software. Yes, today we're gonna to be going over Vibo DJ planning software. For you guys that don't follow my channel or haven't watched some gig logs or anything like that, Vibo is the software that my company uses. We have five DJs in total, including myself, to plan all of our weddings. It is both a mobile application and a desktop application for your clients and yourself to plan out all of their weddings. You can also use this for your events, for high school dances, bar mitzvahs, it has all the tools to craft it around building out planning based softwares for all of those types of events. So in today's video, we're gonna be going through everything related to Vibo. I'm gonna tell you what it is, what it isn't, what you can use it for, the benefits. I'm gonna show you the full backend dashboard on the computer as well as walk you through everything on the app. And uh, I'm gonna wrap this up explaining how you can use this tool to make more money and save time. And of course, the link to Vibo itself, how you can get it is gonna be in the description down below. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through the pricing of how much Vibo costs and all that. Stick around to the end though because I have a very special promo deal that's going on just for the month of April. So if you guys are looking to try out Vibo, they have a incredible special going on right now. So first off, what is Vibo? I kind of already explained it, but Vibo is a planning software. It's an event planning software. It's got tools in it that you'll see around questionnaires, building timelines, building sections of questionnaires, as well as music integration with Spotify, Apple Music, and back-end music integration for you as the DJ in terms of scanning your library, matching songs, and making it easy for you to basically build out all of your playlists incredibly fast for your events. And overall, the software is designed to both increase bookings for you. Yes, this can be used incredibly well as a sales tool to increase your bookings. It also will decrease the amount of communication that you need to have with the client because everything planning wise is so straightforward for the client. It's gonna save you time in terms of prepping all of your music because it's gonna sync with your library as well as you'll see it has links to download any missing music that you might not have. And lastly, it's gonna increase your client experience with you as a company and you will see this tenfold in your reviews. If you guys wanna take a second, pause this video and go over to Fusion Sound and Lighting, look through our reviews on Wedding Wire, The Knot, Google, and you will see that literally just about every review, if not every other review, talks about our wedding planning app and how awesome it was to use. This is a huge tool that we utilize for both sales and client experience. All right, so without further ado, let's jump onto the desktop and talk about Vibo DJs itself. So here's the main dashboard on the left here. You have all of your events. So these are all of our upcoming events we have in the company. We can sort that by DJ, we can search through it, and we can also go to our history and look at all the different events we've done as a company. So as you can see, we've been on, we've done 184 events in Vibo. We've actually done more than that because this is the new 2.0 version, which we switched over to in 2020. We were using the version one from 2018, 2019 and part of 2020. And I would say probably combined, we've done over 250, maybe 300 events through the Vibo planning software, as well as of course, we have another 74 upcoming as well. So little to say that we are very experienced in using Vibo as a company. Over on the left here, after that, we have our song ideas. So if you want to create some of your own playlist, you can do that right here inside of the app. So you can create some playlists to use in the planning software for recommendations. This will all make sense in a second. Uh, below that we have the templates. So these are your personal templates that you have. So we right now have a gender neutral one and we have a general wedding one as well as a birthday party one. If you just get onto Vibo, there are now public templates. So you can literally access templates, including ours, that are being used on a daily basis. So you have the DJ Rick Webb wedding and reception ceremony playlist. And we're actually going to, you'll see them. I'm gonna upload all of our gender neutral one and our one that we're actively using now to Vivo as well. You can see DJ Rachel's are on here, DJ Randy, Joe Bun's got his in here as well, right there, Bun DJ Company. There are tons of wedding planning templates in here. There's an Indian one in here that you can 
craft yours from. So you can go through all of the different ones that people have uploaded to Vibo for them to share and you can make your own. Below that you have profile. So this is where you can set up your DJ profile with your name and all the info that you need, all of your social media links and all of your links to your reviews. I'll show you where this comes in in a second. I am set up as a multi-op so I can also view all of my other DJs. So these are my other four DJs. I can look at their profiles. I can update their profiles to reflect the same as the company in terms of having the same links. After that, we have the scanner tool. So the scanner tool, this is what you're gonna download onto your DJ specific computer. And then you're gonna be able to use in the scanner tool, you can scan your whole entire library. It's very intuitive and easy to use, but basically you select what folders on your computer. So for me, on my DJ computer, it's the music folder. Select that and it's gonna scan all the music you have inside that folder. Then every time you go to plan a wedding, just make sure you rescan for any new songs that you might have downloaded and Vibo will know exactly what songs you have. So right here is my only device I have, my 15 inch laptop. I scanned it six days ago and uh, you can actually have multiple computers in here if you wish as well. Lastly, there's settings, support, and we also have dark mode. So if you would like to view dark mode, you can do that. There's also dark mode on the phone app as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and create an event to show you guys how the process works. So if I say just booked a random couple, let's say Jacob and Abby, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create an event. We're gonna call it Jacob and Abby. And then I'm gonna go to type, this is a wedding. I can select my templates. So I'm gonna select wedding reception and ceremony. Boom, and uh, with our template, we always put this little wording over here, picture that tells them to change the photo to a picture of them. As you guys probably have seen, we have a lot of pictures of the couples. That's a very helpful thing too when you have a bunch of weddings booked to be able to reference to who that couple is, especially nowadays since a lot of our clients never actually see us face to face. It's all virtual meetings. It's nice to always have a picture to reference back to. Location of this, let's just say it's gonna be at the Grandover Resort, the popular wedding venue here in Greensboro, North Carolina, where we're at. And let's say it's gonna be on April 9th. And then you can set it as an active event or a pending event. So one of the things we do is we actually reach out to all of our leads and offer to set them up with the software before they actually book with us as a way to kind of get them on board with the planning software ahead of time. So it could be a pending event or an active event and that's how you can separate them. Boom, we click create event. And now we are in the planning side of the app. So if we want to invite the couple into the app, we're going to go to people, add people, and we're going to copy the host link or the invite by email. You can do whatever you want. We normally copy the host link and then we go into our CRM, which is HoneyBook, and we paste that link into an email template. So if you paste this link into the web browser, this is what the couple would see. They can also open this on their phone. It'll take them to the app store to download the app and then they'll be able to click start planning. And I believe because I'm logged in, yeah, because I'm logged in as my account, it takes me to my back end. But normally it would prompt them to create an account. They can either use Google, they can use their Apple account, or they can create an account with an email. So now this is the way ours is set up on the back end. Well, actually, if we just go back to home real quick, you can see on the left here, we have progress bars to see how far along they are on selecting their special moment songs. So this zero of 17 is strictly for the special moment songs, which I believe any song field you put with 10 or less counts towards this quantity here. So this is stuff like first dance, walking down the aisle, the things that we need them to specifically select are in this. The stuff like dinner music, open dancing, that doesn't count to this song amount or this progress bar. Then of course, how many of the questions have they answered? Our form has 68 different questions for them to answer. We can see over here who the DJ is. If I had other DJs like we do, you can assign them to the event and then it actually will notify that DJ that they've been assigned to the event as well. Here you can set it as pending, active, or locked. The number of days to lock this for the event. So we set this at three. We actually had a learning experience where we had it open so it never locked the profile and we had one of our clients try to change the song that she was walking down to the aisle to the morning of her wedding and she just changed it in the app and didn't notify us and it led to issues. So nowadays we set it to lock it three days out so the client can't make any changes. If they need to make a change, they have to directly communicate with us. Then down here you can you have some toggles that uh, host can invite guests, guests can invite guests. You don't want that on normally. Host can add new sections, host can reorder, the song limit for any new sections, the must play limit for new sections, all that is right here on the home. We've already gone over the people. What we didn't go over is that they can also invite guests. 
So there's two access levels. You got hosts and guests. Hosts by default have access to everything in the app with the exceptions of the toggle settings you put on here. Then all of the guests only have access to the sections that we set up as being a public available option. By default, I only do open dancing. I don't leave any of the other sections available for guests. You can change it to whatever you wish. That's just what we do. So inside the timeline here, uh, we have a general section at the top. There is a new way now in Vibo that you can create sections. So I haven't done this yet, but if I create a new section and I put it as a headline, I can just put general info and then boom. So now I have a heading that's gonna be down at the bottom, I believe. Yeah, so right here, now I have a heading that I can use to separate out. So I can put general info, I can put ceremony and then reception, and I can actually separate this out. And I'm actually, before we launch our forms, I'm gonna go ahead and add those into our templates. But now you can add the section headings as well. Now we have our general info questions here. Again, you guys can get access to our planning form inside of Vibo if you wish, but we have a bunch of general questions, then we go through ceremony, prelude, etc. down the line. So if we go to cocktail hour in any of these sections, we can have questions. If you go to the section uh, settings here, you can make this a headline if you want it to be a headline. You can add a description, so ours says select a type of music and or put in your specific request for cocktail. You can have songs on or off, so by default we have them off but you can set the songs on. It can be who can reorder, DJ and host, etc. Visibility, this is where you can set the visibility to public so guests can see it or DJ only. Who can delete this section, questions on or off, etc. But basically, you can spend some time. Well, I highly recommend you start with someone else's template, but you can go in and literally fine tune tweak every single detail of this app. So if I go to one of these that has music, let's go to open dancing real quick. Right here is the heading at the top, the description of what we discussed, which is in the settings. Then we have the song field here, and we've already gone in and added song ideas. So this is a cool feature, and I'll show it on the app, but this is where you can add in all of these song ideas. So these are the ones that we've selected. These are all the ones that are available. Again, you can create your own idea list if you wish, or you can use the pre-made ones that are in Vibo, which there are 349. So you can search for whatever you want. If I wanted some Latin ones, here are Latin ones. So you can add dinner cocktail to the dinner section. You can add Latin classics to the open dancing one. You can see over here, we have Latin party in here, the Fiesta Latin or Billboard Latin. But then again, these are just idea lists that make it easier on your client to be able to find their songs. Questions, there's also a notes field at the bottom so you can type out all of your notes. And normally when I'm planning a wedding, I will transfer any info that I need to the notes section so that I can download that in the PDF. We have do not play a section. They can go in and add times. You can actually hold and drag and move these all around. If I go to prep mode, this is now where we can use our computer. So I'm gonna open up my computer. And this is not a good example because I don't have any music selected. So we're gonna go to an actual one in a second. The last one is the PDF. So you can download all the info from the PDF. There's multiple options in here. You can do the DJ one, the timeline layout, etc. But you can also customize it. So normally I toggle on the event info, the timeline layout, I want that for sure. The section details, normally I leave those off. Those are like all the questions and notes, but you can turn that on and you can have the questions active or the notes active or just the songs active, I normally leave that off. And then I also leave the playlist off as well, but you can download all of the playlists as well into the PDF. So let's go over to an actual project from my history. So that way I can show you how this works. All right, so Megan and Michael, this was my wedding this past weekend. As you can see now, we can see that they were 86 and 81%. This progress bar actually changes colors as they complete. So it'll start off with no color and then it turns red yellow and then green once they get over, I believe it's 80% because normally nine times out of 10, if they're 80% or more done, they've done everything necessary. Again, the way our template's built, there's more questions than they really need to answer. And there's also more songs available than they really need to be selecting. So now if we go to prep mode and uh, I've already prepped this event, so you'll see that I already have the duns here. But if we go to open dancing here, this is every song that they selected. They selected 31 songs songs and I had 22 of them. Here, Dancing in the Moonlight, I click on it. These are all the different songs that 
were on my DJ laptop. So again, this is syncing with my DJ laptop. So these are all the options I have. I can hover over the info and it can show me here the location of the track, the file name, the title of the name, what the album was, the comments, the artist, etc. How long is this song? What's the file rate on it? It's a 320 file. And it shows me here that this was the last, I selected this one last time. And again, you can see all the info here. On the right here, if you use Virtual DJ, you'll see Virtual DJ. If you use Serato, you'll see Serato, but it will show you your play count. As you can see right there, I played this 11 times in Serato, one time in Virtual, and you can see all your different play counts for all your different tracks. If you are on your specific DJ laptop prepping, if you press that play button, it'll actually open up the file and start playing it on your computer. Pretty cool, so you can quickly listen to it. And also right here, you can open the file in the folder as well. Then if you don't have the track, such as uh, I believe this one, I Stand By Me, I didn't have a good version of it. I only had this uh, YouTube rip, so I went and actually downloaded the song itself, but it actually, <laughs> gives you, as you can see here, it'll give you the YouTube link, the Spotify link, the Apple Music link, the Tidal link, the SoundCloud link, the Deezer link, and the Amazon Store link, so that if you need to go verify what the song this is, download this song, you have all the links possible to go find that song. Again, all these songs have it, and it gives you a percentage match here too. So as you can see, this one scored a 56. If we go up to the Dancing in the Moonlight, these got an 86% match something like ain't no mountain high enough we got 96 percent match on these ones and you can go through and you can flag all the songs that you don't have that way you can go make sure you download them and then once you're done planning say the open dancing section i can click this download mp3 file or mp3 u file if i want to download my open dancing i'll click next and then you can title it right here all selected, top voted is the order, and you click download the mp3u file. Then you can go import that mp3u file into Serato, into Virtual DJ, or you can import it into iTunes, which is what I personally do. I do all my music organization in iTunes. I'm not saying it's the best way possible to do it, that's just the way I use. So I can import that in as a playlist. I go to file, import playlist, select that mp3u file that I downloaded, and then boom, all my music is in there. You can also, for stuff like cocktail, if you wanna export this to your Spotify account, you can click export to Spotify, click the thing, click next, and then you can export it to Spotify. It'll ask you to log in and make sure you're logged into your Spotify but you can do that as well, which is a cool thing to do. And that is kind of how the music matching, planning, prep mode software works. This is super great at making planning super quick for us. Like this cuts down my planning time tremendously. I don't have to go searching for these songs. They basically select all the songs in the app. I pull up the prep mode. It finds all the songs I have and all the ones I don't have. I can easily go through and prep all my music. So this one was a small event. I only had maybe what, like 50-ish, 60 songs, I think. If I go to home, it normally tells me. But I only had about 50, 60 songs on this wedding and I think it took me maybe 20 minutes to prep this, if that. So it's incredibly fast to do. Again, the more songs you don't have, the longer it's gonna take because you gotta go get those songs. But for stuff like open dancing, where I normally have majority of the songs, it's so quick to do the planning process. Most of the time when I'm spending that 20 to 30 minutes, I'm looking for different versions of these songs and trying to be creative and looking on my music pools, like direct music service to find some more creative versions of some of these songs that I might have not thought about, or I might be adding some of these songs that the clients picked. I was like, oh, I forgot about that song. I need to add it to my all ages crate or my open dancing crate. For this one, it has all the info in there. so. We have all the info here. The timeline layout is on with the songs and the notes. Again, I leave section details off. I transfer all of my information that I need into the notes field. And I always turn off playlists because I have all my playlists already set up. So when I click download, I will show you guys real quick. So this is the PDF that gets printed out from Vibo. Again, all the info up here at the top. This is the section layout. Again, I transfer all those notes over here. So all the questions that they answer, I pull out all the details from those questions and transfer them into the notes. So like there were violins for ceremony and cocktail and we're flipping the room. So I put all that info in the notes. Then over here, we ask them how long they want the song, if they want it to be faded out early, do they want the entire song? So I transferred that they want the entire song over to the notes field. We also ask the questions as to who is going to be dancing with who. And then I transfer the exact info of what I need to say over here in notes as well. If I'm doing a longer introduction, we didn't have introductions at this event, you would see where I type out like parents and then the list of the parents below it in the notes field. 
And uh, in the notes field, when you're on the desktop, you can add in the one, two or the bullet notes and you can make stuff bold and underline stuff to really help you uh, put your notes in there cleanly for you to read. It will transfer over any of those songs that are in the less than 10. So any of those special moment songs, as you see here, What a Wonderful World, the dinner music, they actually had less than like five songs in dinner, so it went ahead and put those on there as well. But yeah, this is all the info, and I print out these two forms, and I also take this PDF and put it up on my Google Drive. I put it on my iPad, I put it on my phone, and then I have all my event info for my event. And I just wanted to show you guys that real quick in the timeline music. Uh, down here's the notes field, so if I go to like the combine parent dance, as you type them out, you can actually make them bold, you can make them a heading two to be bigger, heading one, or it could be just traditional paragraph style. And then I can also make that come back over as a thumbnail. I can switch these over to a one and a two list like that, and it makes it super easy. There's also undo buttons, you can paste in their links, you underline stuff. If I wanted to underline this, I could do that. But you basically, it makes it so much easier for you to cleanly organize all of your info in the notes section. And that pretty much is a overview of everything on the desktop side that you need to know. Let's quickly go over to the phone and go through how the phone app works and then I'll talk a little bit more about how you sell this app. So now we're on the phone app here. As you can see, it's very similar. We have the upcoming, the history, all right there available. If I go ahead and click back into one of these events, this is how it looks on the app, and this is how I explain it to the couples in our consultation meetings. So I mentioned I talked about how I use this app to book more events. We talk about the planning app heavily on our website, in our email communications with all of our leads, and every consultation we do, we actually share our screen from our phone and at like wedding shows, we show them in person our actual planning app. So we show them at the top there that they can change the photo to a picture of them. So that way we know looking through all our weddings, we can see at a quick glance who they are. The timeline and music is up here. There's a planning question section. You can see down below here who your DJ is and then you can click on that and see all the info. You can look at all their social media links. There's also links here to where you can go check out our reviews. You can actually click the text button and it'll text the DJ's phone number for you. They can invite people to the app so they can click the invite right there and they can add a host or guest very easily. There's the planning progress here to see how far along they are on answering the songs, answering the questions. You can see the number of songs that they've selected. So I have 75 songs I'm gonna have to prep for this wedding so far. You can see the status, where the event's gonna be, the time, etc. and they can download it to a PDF. And on my side, I can see the event settings at the bottom. So at the top, the two different buttons here, you have planning questions and timeline music. The planning questions is every section laid out from ceremony on with just the questions. So this is the best place for them to start. So I always tell them, this is where you start. You go in here and you start answering the questions and it'll get your brain thinking about all the questions that a DJ needs answered to do their job properly. So they can go into all the different sections. There's like one to three questions related to every single section and it really helps them with their planning process. Then once they get the hang of it, they can go into the timeline music section and now they can go in and add the times and they can move them around if they need to as well, if they need to move these options around or if they don't need this option, I don't know if they've done it yet, but some, a lot of them will delete the um, garter toss and bouquet toss. Say they wanted to delete the toast, they click the options there and they can easily delete it right inside the app as well to delete the unnecessary things that come on the traditional template. Then, you know, if they click on any of these sections, let's go into prelude music, they're gonna see all of the info again so they can adjust the time right there. The info on what prelude music is is right there. Um, you can see the songs that they've already selected. You can see the questions and the notes field right at the bottom. They can leave notes for you and you can write your notes as well. If they go to click add song, this is the first thing I go to, but I always tell them you can search for any song that you're thinking about. You can import directly from Spotify, Apple Music, or you can paste a link from anywhere online when it comes to YouTube, SoundCloud, etc. Or if you don't know what music you need for this, there are pre-made song idea fields, and again, you set these up in the template for each section tailored to each section. So Prelude has Prelude recommendations, and they can go through and they can actually listen to them directly in the app. They can scroll through them like this. They can press the plus button and add them right into that section. And like I said, Prelude Music has Prelude suggestions. If I went over to the first dance and went to change song, there are first dance recommendations in there as well. So if I go back to my prelude example here, you'll see that I can also click the show all songs. So these are all the songs they've selected so far. 
when they click on these songs, they can actually add a little more detail to it. So they can comment on the song, say they want to comment and say that this song was the song that my parents danced to on their wedding day. And that would be awesome if you shouted them out. They can also do the must plays. So in here they can set must play songs. So if they put in their 50 songs for open dancing, you can tell them, hey, go in and select 10 as your must plays. And I will make sure I play those ones. And the other 40 songs, I will try to squeeze in where I can. They can add them to the do not play section or they can remove them right there. There's also a heart system, and we don't necessarily utilize this much, but you can if you want to, especially some of you guys that do like maybe bar mitzvahs and stuff. But like for open dancing, you can invite a lot of guests and they can go through and actually uh, heart all these songs. So you can imagine it's kind of like a liking system, kind of like Instagram. So the songs with the most likes will go to the top, songs of the least will go to the bottom. And at the top there, you can actually filter it by top voted, date added, oldest, date added, newest, uh, custom order, must plays, with comments, without comments, host like, etc. And that right there is a look inside the app. Now, if you guys can't tell already, this software is extremely powerful. There are so many features that are caked into it when it comes to like the liking system on songs. Most of my clients don't even know that exists because it's just so overwhelming in terms of the amount of stuff that they can do. So when I'm actually pitching this to clients, I try to quickly go through and explain to them, this is the home dashboard. You got your progress bars to see how far along you are on the planning process. Then I show them that there's the planning questions are separated out so that way they can easily start looking through the questions and get their mind turning. Then they can go to the timeline music and really develop the whole entire timeline for the evening. They can go in and add their songs. If they prefer Spotify, they can easily import them in. They can import in their Apple Music crates. And I actually also tell them that, you know, once you have this app on your phone, while you're out and about, you know, if you're at the bar and you hear a song, you can quickly open up the Vibo app and add that song into the app so that way you don't forget. So as you can see, this tool is extremely powerful in terms of adding a layer of sales to your funnel. It's just so seamless and easy to use. There's a lot of other, even HoneyBook has a planning feature in it for forms, but having it directly on your phone as an app, and also of course they can use that login and go to the desktop, but the process of that being synced in with Spotify, Apple Music, and all that makes it so easy and convenient for all of your clients to easily plan their wedding, which leads to them, like I said earlier, not needing to communicate with you as much. We actually find that almost like 90% of our clients never bother reaching out to us or responding or asking us any questions related to their wedding because all the info is right there in the app. Now, I'm not saying we don't communicate with them. In our backend CRM, which we're gonna go through in a future video, we're gonna go through the full book project of all the emails that I send out to all of our clients leading up to the wedding. We are in constant communication with them on that front. We are emailing them every single month, if not once or twice, and it ramps up a little bit leading up to their wedding to make sure we're constantly in communication, letting them know what's going on. But again, it's all automated, so we don't have to do anything. And then there are, the DJ has tasks that populate about three months out, mostly on the month outside of things that they need to communicate with the client as well. But what I'm saying is literally on the process of them asking us questions related to the planning process or hey, I like this song, I like this song, or hey, how does this work, or hey, where does I do this? The questions and the songs that are built into the app make it so that they really, all the info is there for them. They don't have to think about it, which is huge, and which is why I mentioned again, if you look at our reviews, they rant and rave about the Vibo platform, making it super easy for them to plan their evening. So now we get to the magic question, how much does Vibo cost if you want to integrate Vibo as a DJ. Let me first preference, we are talking right now in April of 2023. If you are watching this video a year from now, I'm not entirely sure it will be the same price. So keep in mind that I am talking April of 2023. This is the current pricing for Vibo. As of right now, if you are a solo op, it costs you $100 a month. If you are a multi-op, there's different pricing structure for based on how many DJs you have underneath the company. But as a single op DJ, such as yourself possibly, it's gonna cost you $100 a month normally. But right now, they are running a deal. They are running an amazing, awesome special for you guys because we understand that you need to get ramped up into Vibo first. So 
Right now, it is only $49 for the first three months. So it's only gonna cost you $49 for the first month, the second month, and the third month, and then it's gonna bump up to $100 after that. But that way, it's a free trial. You literally can join Vibo at any point. You can quit at any point if you want. But for $49, you can get set up and started messing with the whole Vibo platform. So I'll leave a link down below to Vibo. Basically, you're gonna go on there, you're gonna fill out your info, and then you're gonna select a time slot to talk with one of their representatives. Vibo is huge on being involved with the community. They're huge. The Facebook group we have for Vibo is massive and they literally take all the requests and the recommendations as to things we need to change. And a lot of what you're seeing now is the result of that community adding in all their input and having change. So you'll go on there, fill out your info, select the time to talk with one of the representatives over at Vibo. When you jump on the call, make sure you say that Rick sent you and they will give you the $49 for the first three month deal that I'm talking about. Now for you guys that are freaking out going like, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of money for me to worry about. $100 a month is only $1,200 a year. $1,200 a year should be the equivalent of one wedding. For you to book one more wedding because of Vibo, it's 100% worth it. Between the benefits of using this in your sales funnel, like I said, if you guys wanna go check out Fusion Soundlight and go to our website right now, you will see the Vibo app is bold and proud on the website. If you inquiry with us, it's literally in our sales funnel. It's proud, it's, it's all aggressive. We're showing people because it's a unique selling thing, a unique selling proposition for our company. It is something that we have that our competitors do not have. So if you want that feature to stand out in your market, you should check out Vibo. So between the increase in bookings, the decrease in your time commitment in terms of planning your weddings, people are gonna be bothering you less when it comes to the planning process. And of course, you're gonna see it pay dividends in terms of the reviews. You're gonna see better reviews from Vibo. It's honestly a no-brainer. Once you start with Vibo, you will never go back. It is that good. Anybody that's on the Vibo platform will 100% tell you that once you start on the Vibo platform and you get the experience of how easy it is to use, how much easier the planning process is, how much your clients love it and how you can utilize it to book more weddings, literally you will never use another planning software ever again. So that's it for this video. If you guys wanna check out Vibo, again, check out the link down below, schedule a time to talk with one of their representatives and ask for the $49 for the first three months deal. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any, any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below on Vibo and I will try to answer them for you. And if you're watching at this point in the video, make sure you put hashtag squad in the comments down below so I know the true people that are watching these videos all the way to the end of the video and really being those loyal supporters of the channel. Thank you guys so much. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. But anyways, keep them records spinning and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.